Okay, this is about uh, metastatic, metastatic spine tumors. We see all know that uh, in vertebral tumors, there are uh, primary will be only two to five percent. So the most 90 up to 95 to 98 percent are metastatic spinal cord tumors. So uh, spine again, the spine is the most common site for skeletal metastasis, and it is the third major site for metastasis after lung and liver. The metastatic lesions are the most common tumors of the spine, as we discussed that part. Vitreal body is commonly affected first. Approximately 70% of the patients who died of cancer have evidence of vertebral metastasis and autopsy. It cannot uh, autopsy. And the most important areas for the met, uh, uh, primaries are in the lung, breast and prostate, uh, followed by the renal, GI tract and thyroid. And this tumor spread through the, mostly by arterial route and uh, retrograde uh, spread through the Batson, Batson plexus also uh, very common with, uh, with uh, prostate cancer and uh, there is the direct invasion can get from the lung or, uh, 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 pro, uh, or any posterior structures like a kidney or pancreas. And the frequency, freq the cervical spine is involved in 10% of the cases and the most cases will be in the dorsal spine because of, of the proximity to the, all these structures, all the visceral structures, lung and uh, pancreas, kidney and all, they can directly spread uh, and by bloodstream also it is very easy to reach there. And the lumbosacral area uh, can be 20% of the cases. Sorry. So the most of the symptoms are pain, that is the most common symptom, 84% of the cases will present with the, uh, the pain and uh, in 34% of the cases they will present with the weakness and the mass lesion will be visible, mass lesion and deformity will be visible in only 13% of the patients. So the vertebral body uh, will be affecting 60% of the cases, 10% of the patient will be, uh, pedicle area will be affected, the lamina and uh, the spinous process will constitute 20%. Rarely you can get a secondary deposit in the spinal canal epi, uh, that can be indrad, even intradural and uh, even epidural extra or extradural. So pathogenesis of spinal deformity, uh, you can say once the tumor is, uh, it will grow there and uh, result in compression fracture, uh, then it will uh, further retropulse and it will go into the spinal canal, will create, uh, create um, uh, the spinal cord uh, injury or compression resulting in neurologic deficit. So on the evaluation of workup, we have to get the history first uh, for uh, history of any any weight loss uh, or any chronic cough with a, uh, with a hematemesis, hematemesis, like that you have to get a detailed uh, history and physical examination, then we have to go for all the laboratory investigation that especially PSA and uh, other tumor masters will be help, uh, help you to identify the, uh, the primary sometimes, then you have to go radiological and a biopsy if needed. So then you have to go the x-ray, x-ray AP, you can see that the, this is the pedicle area, this is the pedicle there, and uh, here you can see the one pedicle is missing, that point, there's a marker there that is point missing, it is called a uh, winging old sign, that is one side of the pedicle is destroyed, other side is, uh, only one side will be seen in the x-ray. Uh, and another problem with the x-ray is that up to 30 to 50 percent of the vertebral destruction has to be there to to visualize in the x-ray, you can see that there is a destruction there, but by the time you see in the x-ray, there are 50, up to 30 percent to 50 percent destruction might have occurred already, and again negative x-ray won't rule out any tumor. And uh, if you want to see the uh, see the spinal cord neural elements and all, you have to go uh, for a, a MRI, MRI scan will see the soft tissue tumors also and you to need to uh, do a contrast study. The bone scan is helpful for a very minute or undet undetected uh, metastasis. You will, uh, the, uh, we can see the hot spots all over the spine like this, but only in multiple myeloma you get a cold spot. Uh, all other uh, metastasis will be hot spots. Then coming to the goal of management, the management principle, what are the way we want to manage? We have to, the management, uh, 
uh, uh, to uh, maximize quality of the life of the patient and that should provide a good pain relief, improve or maintain neurological function and restore or maintain the structure and integrate with the spinal column. So indication for surgery. What are the indications? Interactable pain, uh, that is unresponsive to non-operative treatment is uh, the most uh, important indication. Uh, and growing tumor resistance to other measures is another indication. Patients with spinal cord co tolerance, that means after, prior, uh, after the prior radiation therapy, is still started uh, uh, getting deficit, then you have to uh, do surgery. Patient is started to get pathological fracture, progressive deformity or progressive neurological defi deficit. And uh, fifth is clinically significant neurocompression, especially by the bone or bone debris because of the uh, because of the uh, the fracture or sometimes bone expands uh, to uh, expansion can produce compression. And uh, some patient you have to go for surgery for a definitive histological diagnosis. So <coughs> there are certain guidelines uh, are given when to uh, do surgery, when to go for operative treatment, uh, non-operative treatment. So non-operative treatment uh, and radiation can be done no, if there is no significant neurological compromise, involvement of the bone with a minimum neurological impairment, and major neurological impairment without significant involvement of bone. If you, if you do not have anything to decompress, there is no point in going and decompression in that patient you can. This is usually happens when the, uh, the infiltrate the spinal cord uh, or intra, uh, spinal cord substance itself. And uh, you, you should operate, these are Harrington's recommendation, you should operate in vertebral collapse with the pain resulting from mechanical causes or instability, but to no significant neurological compromise. And then fifth is a vertebral collapse, uh, you have to operate if there is a vertebral collapse or instability with a major neurological compromise. Then Tokuyoshi et al. Uh, gives another, uh, there, uh, he um, gives uh, certain scores for, uh, for to guide you whether you need to go for excision or not. And uh, uh, depending on the general condition of the patient, number of extra spinal bone metastasis, number of metastasis in the other vertebral body. Like that, uh, there are three, six criteria given, primary site of the cancer, uh, spinal cord palsy, like that given, and the points are given. Uh, but uh, there is no static, statistical background for these points 1 and 2. He just given the point and now nobody is uh, using this criteria. And Tomita, this is probably the re, uh, most commonly used uh, criterion to decide whether to go for surgery. He uh, graded the malignancy, uh, depending on the three factors, the graded the malignancy of the primary tumor, visceral metastasis to vital organs and bone metastasis and uh, uh, these three factors are considered and the points are given according to the significance and if the points are uh, two and three the points are two and three then it, we have to go long we can get a long term local control and go for a wide or a marginal excision in those cases but if the points are four and five then again it is mid, you can get expect only a mid term local control so marginal or intralesional excision is good enough and uh, six, seven, uh, points are 6, 7, short term palliation surgery is just a palliative surgery to relieve pain or a deformity or a, a to relieve a neurological co compression and the supporting uh, anything above 7 you don't need to go for surgery, you can uh, go for a supportive therapy. Then Winston, Boriani and Bigani surgical staging system is very it is system here you divided the like a clock by uh, division, twelve divisions are there according to uh, their system and depending on the on the which quadrant uh, the tumor is you can decide there are seven gr uh, grades are there, three, only three are uh, shown here, there are seven uh, types and uh, if the tumor is intralation and there is no soft tissue extension you can go for a n block resection uh, that will uh, that will enhance, enhance the longevity uh, lo uh, this of the patient, uh, patient. these are uh, uh, these are all the uh, the guidelines for which, uh, which uh, we can treat the patient and the principal surgery is always the same. We have to do a decompression, we have to realignment if there is deformity and you have to stabilize if there is a potential uh, instability. So this can be done in anterior, posterior or a combined method. Uh, the, uh, method, uh, method. Then uh, 
നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഓപ്ഷൻ ഇത് റേഡിയോതെറാപ്പി റേഡിയോതെറാപ്പി ക്യാൻ ബി ഡൺ ഇസ് ഓൺലി ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് യൂഷ്വലി വി ഫോളോ റേഡിയോതെറാപ്പി ആഫ്റ്റർ സർജറി ബട്ട് റേഡിയോതെറാപ്പി ആസ് ദ ഓൺലി ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് ആർ ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ എ റേഡിയോ സെൻസിറ്റീവ് ട്യൂമേഴ്സ് വിച്ച് ആർ നോട്ട് പ്രീവിയസ്ലി റേഡിയേറ്റ് സ്റ്റേബിൾ ഓർ സ്ലോലി പ്രോഗ്രസീവ് ന്യൂറോളജിക്കൽ ഡെഫിസിറ്റ് സോഫ്റ്റ് ഇഷ്യൂ സ്പൈനൽ കാനാ കോംപ്രമൈസ് and widespread spinal metastasis with a multi level neural compression if there is no evidence of spinal instability and the patient condition or prognosis precludes any surgery if the patient is not surgically fit then this is called adjunct chemotherapy adjunct chemotherapy as you all know it is done after stabilization or decompression but uh, is always if we can wait for a uh, 3 weeks uh, that will be better for a wound healing and if allograft or autograft was used six weeks uh, is the uh, ideal at a uh, time between the surgery and the radiation but this is just a rule if the highly uh, highly uh, very very rapidly growing to a tumor you have to go radiation immediately we have to forget about the uh, fusion in those cases i will give you some um, few example this is a 70 year old patient with a a single level metastasis uh, there is no primary detected this was treated anteriorly this is treated anteriorly with a cage anteriorly alone with a cage and a pedicle anterior pedicle screw uh, there uh, uh, and he was referred for uh, radiation therapy you can see that uh, uh, another patient 70 year old patient with a uh, with a metastasis from the renal carcinoma uh, with a deformity there is a collapse has occurred and there is a neurological compromise is there and he has a deficit started to get deficit for that this this is a combined surgery anterior and posterior surgery is done with the anterior you can see the expanse cell cage with the bone graft sitting there uh, followed by the posterior pedicle screw fixation <coughs> this is actually uh, the uh, young boy with uh, with a uh, with a metastasis you can see that one of the vertebrae body is completely gone and collapsed this is a the c3 is gone and collapsed because it is a young and it is involving a very mobile segment you are you, uh, you are to do an anterior and posterior such cases because uh, otherwise you will definitely going to get a uh, deformity uh, and neurological deficit very 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 rapidly so this was done again a combined anterior and posterior surgery anterior plating followed by the lateral mass screw fixation uh, posteriorly uh, along with the bone graft bone graft fusion this is uh, uh, the prostate ca with uh, started to get some collapse there some eruption there and uh, this is uh, uh, sorry this is from the uh, from the renal cell carcinoma uh, metastasis is always known for a vascularity so the uh, the metastasis met, uh, secondary is from the renal and thyroid are very vascular you can see the for this case we did a pre op embolization we did an embol- uh, em- this is the, you can see that the tumor blush all over the area these are all because of the vascularity then you have to embolize it then you have to go, uh, go for uh, surgery uh, to prevent the bed loss long metastasis all over the place this is a prostate ca- uh, cancer there is some compressed fracture this altered signal intensity there so this is the gadolinium enhanced uh, contrast showing enhanced on all over the place uh, this is a, a same patient even the lumbar spine is also showing multiple uptakes so he, uh, uh, the prognosis for the prostate uh, cancer is very good but here this patient will uh, is uh, heading for a collapse and uh, decompression so such cases sometimes you have to use a long segment fixation Uh, right from the up, uh, upper dorsal to the low uh, to the upper upper lumbar spine you have to do because this you, this are all involved vertebrae you left out all the involved vertebra uh, like uh, there and uh, whenever there is, wherever the we can put the screw we, we fuse it pretty uh, close to a place and uh, uh, fusion was done and this patient is doing very well so to conclude in patients with spinal metastasis neuro uh, metastasis neurological outcome pain control and oncology control are the life and life expectancy are significantly better with selective and appropriate surgical and oncological therapy 
they will do very well if you do it appropriately so single metastasis or a uh, spinum if the primary can be controlled single metastasis is not a, a bad uh, not a bad indicate uh, ba uh, bad indication bad prognosis you can go for a surgery and you can debulk it debulk it or you can do an even end block uh, uh, resection of the tumor and you can uh, you can be tumor free if in uh, in selected case cases uh, thank you very much i am stopping because i have <laughs> done it sorry for that um thank you very much for your patient hearing